An old suspension bridge was the only path residents of a small Bosnian village could use to reach the main road which connected them to civilization. Under the bridge, the flow of the Saint River moved rapidly as it ran down from the mountaintops, even during hot summer days. The deep crystal blue water remained icy cold as it carved its way down into the valleys below. No one knew how deep the river truly was, except a few adventurous divers who kept it a secret, which further fed the veil of mystery that surrounded the place. Taking a break while studying for his bar exam, Brandon felt he could use a walk. His back felt cramped up, while the tension in his headache pressured him relentlessly. He took off his glasses, hoping it would help him to blink more and moisturize his eyes, which proved to soothe his symptoms of short-sightedness. As he walked outside of his house, he felt a bit chilly, since it was already late October. The air felt cold as the wind blew in from the north. He strolled past a few neighboring houses and made his way down to the bridge. He loved the feeling of the bridge cables moving around as he paced over the wooden planks, which he noticed were rotten in some parts. Brandon used to stand on the bridge while observing birds who flew over the river, and deep down inside, he envied their freedom. As he approached the bridge, he hoped he could catch glimpses of the blue hour, right before the night sky starts to take over the horizon. He didn't hope to see any birds nor fishermen at this point of the evening, yet he looked forward to listening to the saint's cold stream, which, in this part of the year, resembled the Arctic itself. While getting closer to the cables, he saw a man standing in the middle of the bridge, right at his favorite spot. From a distance, he couldn't see his face, yet the silhouette looked as if the man was wearing a dark robe that dragged on the planks. The man lifted his head at a glance, but the hood covered his face. Brandon couldn't see what was in the man's hand, but it looked like he was imprinting something on the bridge fence. An unsettling feeling of trembling discomfort ached through Brandon's body, so he decided to change his plan and instead take the nearby route through the lower woods, which would then lead him to the creek below. From here, he would be able to observe the river and still remain out of the view of the hooded man above. He turned away, leaving the mysterious man to his business. The route to the fisherman's spot was overgrown and not easily passable at this time of year, so he moved with caution steadily pacing his steps so he didn't end up tripping in the grass. The sky was starting to black out, while the woods were disturbingly silent. He slowly marched his way through, avoiding the occasional low branch. Even under the late fall temperature, he could feel the sweat on his neck. The pleasant sound of the creek started to echo in the distance. However, he felt even more disturbed than before. At the end of the pass, he saw some small flames flickering in the distance. His heart began to pound as he was expecting to be alone in the darkness at this hour. He felt cowardly enough for already backing down from the bridge, so he decided to continue ahead. After a couple of meters, the branches were behind him, and the grass was replaced by solid soil and rocks. Right before the creek, on the very shore, he saw three men in dark robes with torches in their hands. The flames made a devilish glint on the water, and what he saw next disturbed him to the core. On the ground, there was a half-naked man with a skinny rib cage tied down to pegs in a rectangular shape. His motionless body was covered in blood, while Brandon was unable to see his face since it was covered by a bloody cloth. Brandon began to shake as men started to lift their torches and walk circles around the body. They were chanting, the water will cleanse you. He held his breath, not knowing what to do. One of the men pulled a dagger out from underneath his robe, and Brandon only barely managed to suppress his scream. He had neglected to bring his phone, so he couldn't call the police. Instead, he just stood in complete frozen terror, witnessing what seemed to be a ritual sacrifice. In a split second, before the man lifted his dagger, the water was violently disturbed by a small vessel which grounded itself at the shore. A fourth man, the one he saw on the bridge, jumped out from behind the boat. He took his hood off, showing the pale skin of his face, which was covered in tattoos. Even under a dark sky, Brandon could see his evil eyes just scanning around the shoreline. At that very moment, their eyes met. 
The discomfort he had felt earlier on the bridge transformed into terror as the man swiftly stepped toward him at a rapid and threatening pace. Brandon's instincts kicked in. In an instant, he forgot about the poor man being held for sacrifice and started fleeing backward. He could hear the breath of the man behind him as he ran through the bushes, while the nearby branches slapped him across the face. His lungs began to burn. He didn't have a lot of stamina, so in his mind, a couple of hundred meters felt like an eternity. He finally made his way out of the woods onto the path. The man in the robes was still behind him, so he turned left to the bridge since there were no nearby houses and no one to call for help. The lack of oxygen started to manifest in Brandon's mouth. It felt dry and sore as he tried to close the distance to the bridge, hoping to reach anyone on the other side. Brandon, now having ceased running due to exhaustion, walked on towards the middle of the bridge. As he looked behind him, the man in the robes had started to speed up again. When he came to the middle of the planks, he stood in disbelief and was overwhelmed with fear. He looked at the metal fence and read the imprint the man in the robes wrote not half an hour ago. It was barely legible since it was carved by a blade, yet he was certain it read as Brandon McCain, 7th of August 1993 to the 20th of October 2021. It was his name with the date of his birth, and he realized as the man closed in on him holding a dagger, it would be the date of his forthcoming death. Before the man could swing his blade, Brandon forgot all about the legends of the saint's depths and freezing temperatures. The river could be swamped with monsters for all he cared. He lifted his right foot on the fence, and as the man made his move, he evaded the blade that nearly penetrated through his heart by jumping off the bridge. As the icy water splashed all around him, his blood circulation began to go wild. He had just enough time to look up and see the man in the robe still observing him. And after that, he tried to stay up, but the bitterly cold stream pulled him down and his body began to tremble from the incredible pain that consumed his entire being. He then involuntarily closed his eyes, never to open them again.